I sorry uh, to keep you guys waiting. I was visiting with a Kevin Hall, professor here on campus, his sports media class, trying to help the next generation of uh, you guys as well. So enjoyed visiting with them. Thanks to Kevin for the opportunity to visit with his class and some great questions that they had uh, as well. Appreciate all of you being here today. Um, awesome, awesome opportunity to bring Sean Elliott back um, to Columbia, someone that I have a ton of respect for as a person, as a coach, recruiter. Uh, got very close with him when he came here at South Carolina um, as an assistant coach when I was here with Coach Spurrier. Saw the impact that he made on our program, uh, particularly on the offensive line when he came in as an assistant coach and, and enjoyed our time together. And then someone that I've kept in touch with uh, since then and have a ton of respect for what he did as an assistant coach before he got to South Carolina uh, at App, what he did when he, when he was here, and then obviously what he's done at Georgia State um, since he's been there as the head coach uh, as well. Uh, I'm always trying to make our program better, and he makes our program better. He, along with the other assistant coaches that we've hired since January as well, couldn't be more excited about um, the staff that we've put together, thanks to uh, our administration, Dr. Amy Ramirez, come on, Jordan, Dr. Ramirez, uh, Coach Tanner, Chance Miller there as well for the um, opportunity to uh, that they gave us to bring these guys here to Columbia. And there's no question that you know since the end of the season, we're, we're better as a, a team and as a program. The players that we have in this program coaches, staff, and, and really excited about finishing up our winter workouts here over the next couple of weeks and then spring break for our guys and then getting cranked up with spring practice here uh, in the middle of March. So any questions? I know you guys are eager to hear from Sean, but anything from me before we bring him up? Obviously not. Uh, easiest press conference ever. So, well, again, uh, when, when I was looking, to, uh, uh, looking at this position, it was something that – how can we be better? Who makes us better? And there's no question that Sean Elliott makes us better in a lot of ways uh, on and off the field and uh, certainly has been very well received. We were at a clinic in Myrtle Beach over the weekend, Friday and Saturday. Our coaches were there and can't tell you how many high school coaches came up to me on Friday night. So excited about this guy being back in the state of South Carolina, back here in Columbia, where he belongs. And, and he's already made an impact on our team and with our players and can't wait to see uh, where we go here going forward. So please help me welcome back Coach Sean Elliott. Oh, <clears throat> well, first of all, I want to thank Coach Beamer, Coach Tanner, Chance. Uh, certainly an awesome opportunity to be back here in Columbia, South Carolina with the University of South Carolina. It's, uh, you know, to, to be honest with you, it, it almost seems like I, I haven't left. Uh, uh, from afar and then from a near also, I've always kept up with the University of South Carolina, how they were doing in, in so many different ways. I believe everyone knows here that my family uh, still resides here in Columbia. So the transition from Atlanta back here to Columbia was very, very easy. Uh, you know, when this position became available, uh, I targeted. I mean, I, I, I reached out and, and wanted them to know that uh, this was something that, that, that I wanted to do uh, for many reasons, but uh, ultimately, I think uh, for my family, uh, uh, you know, the most important people in my life live here in the state of South Carolina in the Columbia area. My parents are still in Camden and, you know, it was just a move that I, 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 I wanted to pursue and uh, very fortunate that I had the opportunity to be back. I'm looking forward to making an impact here on the University of South Carolina, their players, their coaches, uh, everyone involved. Uh, I, I know I, I have the passion and uh, I'm here to inspire and motivate and do everything I can to, to put this program right where it needs to be, and that's at the top of the SEC in the country. And uh, ultimately, that's what my, my goal is. Uh, you know, as, as I was looking and, and coming back here, I, I started, you know, thinking, you know, uh, about really personal goals, uh, to be honest with you, and it really doesn't have a whole lot to do with football. Uh, I said, man, if I can coach at the University of South Carolina and I've got my son, he's a high school football player at AC Floor. I said, if for whatever reason he can develop into a college football player and have the ability to come and play for the University of South Carolina. And my, my daughter, she's a competitive cheerleader at AC Floor and does a phenomenal job. She's won multiple state championships. I said, but one day, 
you know, if I could, if I could be coaching on that sideline, potentially coaching my son at the University of South Carolina and my daughter cheering on that sideline, I said that's a, that's a dream come true. And I have no idea if that's the case, but honestly, uh, that would be something uh, for me as a person and, and a family man and a dad, and uh, just unbelievable experience. But uh, love the opportunity to be here. Can't wait to get started. Been started a couple days now, and uh, looking forward to many more days ahead. Sean, welcome back. Hey, David, thank you. <laughs> um, switching over to tight ends, you know, yeah. what's that that challenge like? Uh, I know obviously it's a shorter group of people or a smaller group of people, but what's been the biggest challenge of switching from O-line so many years to tight ends? Well, I think you're just involved in, in so much more of the passing game, you know, the route combinations, the concepts, uh, you know, that's one thing. I, I'm not going to call it a challenge because I've been around football my entire life and I actually started my offensive coaching career coaching the tight ends at Appalachian State. And, uh, and loved every minute of it. I think as a tight ends coach, it, it really it, it, it makes you involved in everything uh, through the course of the offense. You, th you throw game, you run game, you're just so much more involved uh, in everything that they do offensively. Uh, I've always said, you know, if you, you ultimately want to be one of the greatest coordinators, you've you got to have that concept to pass and run game and understand the combination and how it works together and, you know, play calls and what sets up this. And uh, this gives me the ability to be really back in that fold. and. Uh, you know, as a head football coach, I always had uh, kind of the responsibility of overseeing all position coaches, and I would uh, kind of go over there and throw some of my time in with the tight ends, the O-line, the running backs, the quarterbacks, and uh, so I've had to experience all of that as the head coach. Hey, Coach Elmer Granahead, Big Spur, welcome back. How um, you doing? Appreciate it. Yes, sir. I, obviously, there was a lot of national conversation when, when you made the move, and with, with all that that comes with college football coaching these days and all that general stuff. Can you address just that conversation and, and sort of what your take on, on maybe that aspect of it was and, and, and leading to, to you coming back? You're, you're going to have to fill me in on that conversation. Just, I haven't had that conversation. Yeah, sorry. As far as, you know, being a coach at, at a place like Georgia State when, when you have – have to fight to keep your players. If, and really if you're talking rounds. about, you know, uh, the NIL and retaining players and not getting, you know, a quote unquote poached and, you know, I, th I think we lost, uh, and I, I'm not certain on this, but I think we lost 22 players at Georgia State uh, to, to Power Five programs over the last two years or last three years. And, and that's, a, that's a huge amount. They were all really, really good football players, but uh, that, that had no, uh, no effect on me wanting to come back to the University of South Carolina or take this job. I was, I'm never a person that runs from a problem. I've always found a solution on how to fix it. So uh, that doesn't, uh, didn't have any effect. Like I said, the most important, most important people in my life live here in the state of South Carolina, especially here in the Columbia area. And uh, ultimately that is what I wanted in my life and I needed to have that back in my life. Hey, uh, Sean, welcome back. Thank Appreciate you. Uh, you doing this uh, for us. What have you learned over these last seven years as a head coach that you're going to be able to bring back? And is head coaching after possibly your son and daughter are here at South Carolina doing what they're doing and you're here, is head coaching something you might want to experience again? You know, to answer your first question, what do you, what do you learn as a head football coach? Uh, you know, at Georgia State, it was, it was probably much different than it is here at the University of South Carolina. Uh, you know, you, you wore a lot of hats. You had to be a position coach. You had to coach special teams. You had to, you had to be involved in everything. We, uh, you know, we only had a staff of about, really myself, 10 assistant coaches, five GAs, and uh, a couple other support personnel. We didn't, we didn't have a whole lot. So, you know, uh, it, it was kind of like being back at App State in the early years. You had to do more than what was expected. You had to go out and, uh, I, I mean, I would take trash out. I would, I would vacuum. I would, I would do everything you can imagine. Uh, in being a head coach, but truly the the number one I the number one thing I think I, I'll bring back is is just ultimately how you how you involve yourself with with the in the total team. I mean, from the long snapper to the to the punter to the quarterback to the secondary to your your linebackers. I mean, how do you how do you fit in all their lives? And and, and that was something I had to I had to find out. How do you do? You know, uh, what conversations do you start? You know the my head coach at Appalachian State, Jerry Moore, he, he, he taught me probably the most important thing. And uh, he said, always keep a big old 
uh, box of candy or a big old jar of candy in your office, gum, chocolate, whatever it is. And that way it's going to bring everybody into your office. And once the word gets out that you've got the candy in your office, then, then they start filing in on a daily basis. So I did that, and he was exactly right. And so I started conversations with, with a different positional player each and every day, uh, just understood what type of night they may have had, what type of situation they were in, what type of mood they were in, and it, it just led to a lot of different conversations. Uh, do I ever see myself being a head football coach? Uh, you know, I haven't even thought about it. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here as the tight end coach. If I, if I can end my career right here coaching the tight ends at the University of South Carolina, and trust me, I've got a long way to go. I'm still only 30 years old, so I've got a hell of a long career ahead of me. Uh, then, then I'm thrilled to death. But, uh, but ultimately, I, I'm as excited today uh, being here as, as the tight end coach at the University of South Carolina as I was when they named me the tight end coach at Appalachian State or the offensive line coach at Appalachian State or the day I walked in here to coach the offensive line at the University of South Carolina. This is a fantastic day. I'm thrilled to death. Uh, I couldn't be more excited to be here. And, and ultimately, I, I'm here to do one thing, and that's to make this football program better in every aspect of it. Hey, Sean, welcome back home. Thanks, Rick. Uh, just want to know, what's the favorite candy that you keep in your office? I had gum and blow pops. So uh, yeah, those guys would just, I mean, they'd just file in. But yeah, we had, to, we had to keep it stocked. And from a personal standpoint, uh, how much easier or how much more relieved are you going to be coaching now that you don't have that separation and distance between you and your family and you don't have to worry so much about missing important family events? Well, if last night's sleep was any indication, I went to bed. It was right around 10.15, and I didn't wake up until about 5.15 this morning. And I slept the entire night through. And uh, it was just, you know, it's different. I don't know if you've ever been separated from your family or not. Uh, and, and trust me, and I want everybody to know, we, we made that decision to leave our family here in Columbia and, 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 and go through the difficulties and sacrifices that you have. Uh, but just being back here, it's, it's incredible. Um, the relief, uh, knowing that, you know, whether or not I get to look at or, or speak to them before they go to school, but knowing they're going to be home at night and I'm going to walk in that door and the same thing. And, you know, there, there's, there's situations at home that you got to take care of. The heat went out, I think, Thursday night when I got back. And she, my wife says, uh, you're dealing with that. You know, I've, I've dealt with it for the last seven years. It's time for you to call somebody. Uh, but it's, it, it's just a really nice feeling. Hey, Sean, Jack Veltry, GamecockCentral.com. First off, welcome back to Columbia. Thank um, you. you know, there's been a lot of former players that you coached, like Marcus Lattimore, Connor Shaw, and then just even the fans super stoked about you coming back to Columbia. First off, what does that mean to you? And um, this is kind of a two-parter question, but when did you kind of know that maybe, you know, you had the idea of, hey, maybe I can come back and, you know, coach here in some capacity? And um, I guess just what, is it, what does it mean to you just overall? Well, you know, any any time you have former players that uh, that speak on your behalf and speak highly of you, then you know you made an impact on them. And I, I think that's what everyone, every coach that that's in this profession ultimately wants. They they want the players that they've coached to to speak highly of them and be excited about what they did for them when they were coaching them. And for these guys, uh, you know, and I, I don't know who all has done that, of course, but uh, I've seen a few. It just means a lot. It means I I made a difference in somebody's life and. Uh, it's not something that they just, you know, walked in here one day and walked out with. But over the course of their career and over the course of their lifetime, they hadn't forgot about Sean Elliott, and I've done something right in their life. Um, the second part question, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when did you kind of spoke about it earlier? Oh, yeah, when, when did I know? You know, it was, uh, it was very quick. Uh, it was very quick with Coach Beamer. Maybe Wednesday night or Tuesday night. It was a Tuesday night phone call and – Another phone call on, on Wednesday morning, and then, and then that was it. You know, like I said, I'd always keep up with the University of South Carolina from afar, and you know, uh, when 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 positions would come available, I, I would, uh, you know, kind of see what they were. But uh, like I said, it, it happened very quickly, and I think Tuesday night and Wednesday morning was, the, was when I knew. Hey, Sean Jordan K with the the state here. Um, I guess the, the first thing, you've mentioned your family so many times. How tough was that decision years ago to um, you know, go to Atlanta and leave them here? And, 
And then over the last couple of years, like what did a, a week, a typical week in your life look like of, of trying to commute back and forth? <laughs> oh, you know, the, the decision, uh, seven, seven and a half years ago to, uh, to take the head football job at Georgia State was, was what I needed to do in my career at that point in time. Uh, I needed to leave the University of South Carolina. I needed to go and uh, establish myself as a head football coach, uh, prove to myself and, and everyone else that I have the ability to run a program, take a program that's a struggling program and, and, and build it in something that's uh, to be proud of. And, uh, and, I, and I did that. I think we, at Georgia State, we were, I mean, they'd never won a bowl game. They'd never had a winning season in the FBS. And we had five winning seasons. We were four and one in bowl games, five bowl games in seven years. And, and uh, a, a lot of things right there we did really uh, well. And, 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 and I'm very proud of that, I'm very proud of it. But the decision to leave my family here was one of the most difficult ever. I, I, I thought about my kids. I thought about Columbia was all they knew, uh, their friends, my my family, uh, my mom and my dad, uh, everything. Uh, so to do that was very difficult, but I knew I was making the right decision for them and for myself at that time. A day in the life, wow, that, that can get tough. Uh, day in the life. So, yeah, you know, Sunday's typical day. Sunday, uh, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, depending on where my son was in his uh, in his sports career, if he was playing middle school ball, we would practice in the morning. He would have a game at five o'clock. At twelve o'clock, I'd be like, "Hey guys, Max playing at five. I'm out. See y'all." And uh, I would get in the car and I'd drive back here. I'd watch Creighton Middle School play football. My son Max play and uh, get in the car and drive back uh, to Atlanta that night and 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 be in the. Uh, you know, for the meetings and the practice the next day. And if it was my daughter, if it was cheerleading for her, then, uh, you know, those cheerleading competitions, they last forever. But the actual stunning and cheerleading only lasts about two minutes and 45 seconds. So if it was, a, if it was something that was going on at Irmo High School or wherever it might be, I, I would show up for two minutes and 45 seconds. I'd give her a clap, a hug, and a kiss, and we'd all love one another. And, hell, I'd get in the car and drive back to Atlanta. <laughs> Let's just say I bought a new truck a couple of years ago, and I've got, uh, let's see, in 2021, yeah, I think I've got 110,000 miles on my truck. So I, I was back and forth quite a bit. Sometimes I'd come back two times during the week. But I, I, I'd do it, and I, and I did it because that was so, what I was supposed to do. That, that's what I needed to do, and, uh, and nothing was going to stop me. You know, I, I've, I've been coaching the game of football for a long time. I was straightforward with my players and my staff. I told them this was important to me. And uh, I said, you guys can take care of it. I promise you I'm not going to put you in a bad situation because I missed four hours here at, at, at the office. So uh, it all worked out. And like I said, uh, we had a really good run there at Georgia State. But I'm, I'm thrilled to be back here with my family and uh, be in South Carolina with the people that I love. Hey, Sean. How are you good doing, to see sir? you again. Um, I think what surprised a lot of people was that your spring practice had started and then – you know, you resign and, and come back here. What was it like for you to deal with that part of it, talking with uh, Mr. Cobb and, and then with your players when you made this decision to come back to South Carolina? Yeah, you know, uh, you set your calendar long in advance. And, uh, you know, you, we had our early spring practice plan just like we had done the year prior. And everything was on go. It was uh, unfortunate. I, I, I went into spring practice not knowing that this call was going to be made. I uh, had no indication whatsoever. And we were full speed ahead. It was uh, unfortunate that we had we'd gotten two days in and uh, that we had to put a halt to it. But, you know, there wasn't another way that, uh, that I could have done it. And, you know, we had, we had not tough conversations with the staff and with our players. We had really good open conversations. And, you know, I don't think I walked out of there with any one of those guys looking at me and saying, you know, why or this. They, uh, I mean, it was more congratulations, hugs, thanks for everything you've done. Uh, support you in every way, families, everything, and and go be great. Uh, yeah, Joe Machika, Gamecock Central coach. Welcome back to Columbia. How you doing, Joe? Um, so part of your title is now run game coordinator. Can you describe to us what kind of role you will have with Dowell Loggins in the offense? Yeah, well, I've only been in the, in the meetings here now. This is just my second day. Uh, we're going to sit down. We're going to talk, and we're going to see where the deficiencies are in, in the run game here. 
and see what we can do to improve them. If it means adding a couple of things, um, adding the run game to our personnel that fits it best, then, then we'll probably do some of that. But uh, as, as we sit here today, we have not sat down specifically and talked exactly how we're going to do that. Uh, Alan Cole, GamecocksCoop.com. Welcome back to Columbia. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know how much you've had a chance to talk to players yet or maybe sit down with them, but how much do you know about this roster? How much were you able to kind of keep up with it from Georgia State, from what you're walking into? Yeah, you know, um, I don't know a whole lot about the roster at this point in time. I've just worked with the tight ends this morning just for about 20 minutes an individual. Did have a Fort Jackson workout with them. So I got to see them firsthand, kind of go through uh, the ropes, so to speak. Uh, the more I'm here, the more I'm going to understand that and, and develop a relationship with these guys and uh, kind of know exactly who I got. Uh, it's a feel thing. You know, today as we were running through just drills, I mean, every one of the tight ends, I said, before you go, each rep, I said, before you go, you got to stand up, you got to say your name, you got to say where you're from, and, and give me something about you because I want to ultimately know everything I can about these individuals, uh, not just about their athleticism, but about everything that's involved in their life. Hey, Sean, welcome back. Thank you. Um, with your experience, obviously, as an O-line coach and the, the fact that the O-line and tight ends have to work so much together, how, how much do you envision yourself being involved with, with the O-line group, too, with a, a young guy and, and, and Lonnie Teasley being there and kind of giving some of your wisdom to that side? I, I, I think any staff works well together and, and, and works together in all aspects, whether it's run game, throw game. Uh, we, we all have to work together, and we all have to, we all have to help each other. I think, um, you know, with, with me coaching the offensive line for, for several hundred years uh, before coming back here, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hopefully uh, help Lonnie and help the offensive line. And, and Lonnie's going to help me understand a lot of different things. I mean, we're, 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 we're staff, and, and we work for the University of South Carolina. And I think ultimately uh, we all know what the goal is. That's to be better in every facet, whether it's a run game, throw game, pass protection, whatever it may be. Uh, so if he needs anything from me, I, I'm going to offer it up to him, and, and we're going to work well together. And it's not about egos, you know. A lot of people in this in in coaching think this thing's about egos, and for me, I, I don't have an ego. I, I just stepped down as the head football coach at Georgia State University, to become here at University of South Carolina, uh, and, and and I've got zero egos. But I want to help everybody I can help, and I need help in every area. I need somebody to tell me, you know, about these route kind, about the stick route, uh, and, and how we need that run. So I'm going to need people to to come to me and, and and offer some advice to make me the best coach I can be. Ultimately, we want to win, and that's the bottom line. Sean, uh, obviously, you had a very eventful run here at South Carolina the first time. You hear a lot of positives, some negatives, that kind of thing. What do you what stands out to you? What do you remember most about your time here at South Carolina before going to Georgia State? The fans. I mean, the most passionate fan base you can you can have. Um, you know, that was that was something that we we just didn't have a lot of at Georgia State, and I, and I just the support here in South Carolina is incredible. It, it's 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 not matched a lot of places across the country, and, and the love that they have for the Gamecocks and the University of South Carolina is something that you just see. I mean, it's just evident every single day, everywhere you go. Uh, just me coming back here in the last couple of days, I, I mean, I, I can't go anywhere. I mean, it, it, there's Gamecocks everywhere. They're, they're just, and, and they're so fired up. I mean, they're, they, they're, 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 I don't know if you call it hunger or passion, but they have it, and they've always had it. I mean, since, since the time I was a, a small child walking into williams Bryce Stadium for the very first time, I felt it, and I feel it to this day. And I can, I can honestly tell you when we walk in for that spring game, it's going to be there, and then for that, that home opener. But uh, it's, it's the fans. And there's so many other things that I can talk about. Uh, my experience here before was incredible. Uh, there was not a day uh, th that I can look back on and tell you there was a day I regretted being at the University of South Carolina. It was, it was fantastic. Sean, also while you were here, you got known for a pregame running into your offensive lineman bouncing off. Do you plan to do that with the tight ends? Have you already introduced them to that? You know, I, I said I was thirty years old, but I'm, I'm actually fifty, so I've gotten a little older. And some of those, some of those bumps and, and scrapes, and those start to hurt a little bit more these days. But 
you know, there's a lot of days that I wake up on game day and I just don't like a whole lot of things. And, uh, and, and I have to get some of that energy out. And it's, I can't do it with a jog. I can't do it with uh, – so sometimes I have, to, I have to take that energy and I have to push it towards others. And, and uh, sometimes they need a wake-up call. So if there's, there's a, if there's a time where I see somebody needs to, you know, needs it, then, then, then I'm here to give it to them. Thank you all very much. Glad to be back home.